uh, very good morning to you. Uh, as a journalist, I play with stories, I play with ideas to make it very long lasting and having an impact. So let's start. First of all, respected dais, my fellow speakers, uh, teachers, parents, and of course, my dear friends. It's definitely a great privilege and opportunity as a journalist to speak here and share my ideas. I'm really overwhelmed. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for management to give me an opportunity and also for the kind words of my introduction. You know, as a practicing journalist for now almost 37 years, I have been doing it daily. I mean, daily for last so many years, giving my headlines for my stories. But I thought for a speech like this, I must give a unique headline, and which I've chosen personally, was my craze for a byline. You know, journalists strive to get bylines. You know, just to put it very similar kind of an example, a student always looked to have more and more medals recognition. An artist for fame, publicity. So are so politician. My God, he requires, he or she needs more and more power. They are all crazy about that. So journalism is not an exception. Definitely, I'm crazy about my bylines. And I want to do as much stories which I can with my bylines, which will have an impact, lock lasting, which will be definitely referred by one and all, not just instantly, but in future too. I still remember uh, when I was uh, in eighth standard, I decided to offer a journalist. Uh, practically, I was ridiculed, I was heckled, I was criticized, I was trolled. Not like the uh, today's world of social media, but of course, verbally. I don't care, I did not care. Because my parents were supportive, my sister was quite supportive, and I decided to pursue it. And I tell you, I enjoyed the path with the quote unquote generally would not have been selected or is not being looked at. And I'm really happy for the last 37 years, there is no moment to repent. Of course, there are so many ups and downs. You know, I, I have been covering uh, politics for now almost more than three decades. There are so many pulls and pressures, but you have decided to be a journalist with a core value, with an ethic, and with a determination that I'm not going to accept any favor, I'm not going to accept any bribe, and I don't want to come into any kind of a political schism or to be tacked as I am presenting or representing some particular ideology or some political party. I, I think the world is yours, and I'm enjoying that. In, in journalism, there are two interesting things we were earlier told. Because I come from a school of thought, we were told journalists are not supposed to speak. In fact, they are supposed to speak less. I, do, I actually want to breach that uh, you know, thinking, and I breach that. You know, journalists definitely are supposed to write stories, maximum they can, but at the same time, in the changing world, they are also supposed to speak so that they are being taken note of it, and ultimately, the power that be will definitely see that they will swing into action and address the issues we raise. And you know, other, another funda to, uh, to which we were told is that, very interesting example, uh, there is a similarity between no, news and snakes. You know, news is like this, you know, you have to chase that, you have to sniff that, you have to live with it, otherwise you won't be able to write. But at the same time, you know, if you, if you miss that news, there is nothing else but to repent it. As far as the snake is concerned, Boss, there is a snake. You are watching. You are coming And if you try to fiddle with it or do something adventure, then you will have to have, you know, either they will bite it or they will kill you. So the news and the snakes are so important for me. And I think I try to follow that and I'm enjoying. You know, I, I grew up uh, uh, in a born and brought up in a typical middle class working family. You know, in the 80s, uh, uh, I mean, I was born in the 60s. The general tendency was, boss, after 10th, you have to do arts, commerce, science, then basically do teacher, professor, or a government servant. Oh my God, if you 10 to 5 job you get, you have it. And then, of course, engineering, polytechnic, and whatnot. But I decided to be a journalist. Uh, so I decided to you know, do my BA in economics, 
While doing that, I preferably choose to have a politics as a secondary subject so that I should be in the know of it, what's happening in the political world, at the same time, what's happening in the changing economic scenario because there were uh, talks of liberalization, globalization, and privatization. Then I did my MA in economics. But while doing MA, I also tried to do a diploma because at that time, the Bombay University was not having a degree course in journalism. Of course, now they have started. So I did my diploma in journalism from the KC College. So parallelly, I was doing MA in economics and that too, I chose a very interesting combination. I chose uh, public finance and the economics of education, economics of health, economics of infrastructure. So these are all public related issues which I can flag off as a journalist. And I tell you, I also work with tall editors, you know. One of them was uh, telling me, and of course I followed him so true principle that he told me, Sanjay, you are well with Marathi, at the same time you can speak English. So to have quote unquote in a typical journalistic parlance, you should go for a lethal combination of politics and finance. And I tell you, it came so handy to consolidate myself and emerge at this level because of following politics at the same time following finance. This is definitely a deadly combination which I have been doing just yesterday where, where we are now happening right now also in Gujarat there is a G20 thing happening. This is regarding the finance of all G20s and what they are going to do. I am I'm reporting it from Mumbai. So, so, you know, I'm going to focus in next 10, 12 minutes is that as a journalist, I have to tell my stories, uh, you know, they should be heard, they should be written about, and they should be read about. I've just selected because I, I, I have covered encompassing practically all what we call as a bits from a crime to health, to education, to politics, to infrastructure, particularly power, highways and whatnot. And of course, what we call as multilateral education, I mean institutions like World Bank, IMF, then of course G20, KGF and everything. My core always used to be the decisions are being made in the larger interest of the people. My job as a journalist is to project that. If they are not happening, my job is also to have a critical analysis. My job is to bring to the notice, these are the issues, this needs to be resolved at this level. So, you know, I've got about some four or five stories to share with you in that limited time, which has emerged as a flourishing now city, what we call as an entrance to a commercial capital of uh, Mumbai. You know, as a cup reporter, I was chasing a story day in and day out. There is a hill called Yaur Hills. Uh, from station, it comes to about seven to eight kilometers. There were practically very few examples which were coming in, wherein the leopard always used to attack the tribal community, their children, their dogs and whatnot. So I was wondering why as a reporter I should visit that area and have a first kind of reporting. Luckily, my sources were so nice. At one phone, fine morning that we used to have the typical MTNL uh, phone, I got a call at around 9.30 in the morning. Sanjay, there is one incident which has happened at the Yau Hills about four or five year old girl from a tribal you know, community member who are residing in the hills, she was literally snatched away from the home and has been brutally killed about four to five kilometers in the deep down forest. As a journalist, I said I have to visit. And luckily I managed to uh, went there about some 20, 25 minutes. By the time the forest guard, the police, the community members and everybody were gathered. It was definitely a risky affair. You know, nobody was knowing whether the leopard is hiding somewhere, whether they have got a bunch of leopards there, but we preferred to go there. And I tell you, as a journalist, as a cub reporter, it was my first story to break that I could reach that spot which was about two kilometers away. We could see that body lying and, you know, the, you know the, all those pug marks and whatnot, and then the entire post took place. As a journalist, two things and two takeaways which I wrote and which is now a kind of a debate right now which is I know, uh, right now happening. One, the rising a conflict between man and animal. Look at it, the way we are encroaching on the forest areas and you know try to disturb ecological balance, I think we are going to pay for it. 
so that was my first learning as a journalist and i have been following it since then till now also because you know there is very interestingly the state wildlife board which is there in all states and also at the national level they come out with a regular policy interventions uh, to minimize this kind of man animal conflict my second story interestingly you know uh, there earlier used to be the trans thane ek creek area which is known as a thane belapur industrial area bustling chemical and petrochemical units that time but the 1992 so called recession literally and you know, i mean the entire industry just went off very few industries there always used to be no sil pill standard alkyl you name it they were bustling you know so i came to know one morning uh, in a turbe area from my thane about some maybe 10 12 kilometers some 9 to 10 people died you know for what there is an adjoining uh, what we call as a central warehousing depot these poor guys who were uh, i mean residing in the adjoining colony they always used to go uh, to catch the fish in the mekshi pond that they generally come up they were not knowing whether this water gathered is a contaminated one you know why because adjacent to that same depot there used to be series of petrochemical units and unfortunately they were bypassing the law they were just outpacing whatever the stipulated norms they were there and they were discharging the emission in that pond poor guy they lost their life ultimately you know during that time i was not affording a very flashy camera i took that alpha ca you know camera small one i managed to get all the photos and the pathetic scenario was that the management of this company was so reckless so careless as if they have not done anything but that literally happened because the authority i mean what we call as the maharashtra pollution control board environment agencies they swung into action and they saw that the action is taken so this is going to have a major impact in nowadays also as you may be uh, reading and listening to the stories how the industries from dombivli ullas nagar in the adjoining area just discharging the water in the ullas nagar and couple of other rivers and polluting it that was my second story third you know as a journalist covering crime covering communal riots communal uh, basically serial bomb bus you know just to tell you i was at the mantra like entrance sitting with the minister of state you know by 12:30 there was a bomb blast which has already taken place at the bombay exchange so we told the minister let's go let's go and just see what has happened and we were about to take a left hand turn to go towards the bombay stock exchange we got to know at the mantralay just just opposite there was a series of bungalows cottages you know of small small houses for the bungalows we thought the major blast has taken place at the air india so we uh, took to that area i was one of the my, myself and my one of my colleagues from the economic times we were the only two reporters we were there and mr emin singh was there and this minister was there we literally oh my god it was very i mean i said such an emotional thing for me to cover because another incident was about the communal riots oh my god 1992 93 communal riots we used to be on the field i would have been killed second bout was too dangerous but i covered it again as a journalist i was impartial i tried to give what's happening there and we used to mingle with uh, the police commissioner the joint commissioner and there used to be a series of meetings which used to take place how it can be tackled as a journalist i will continue to project and feature such kind of stories just one more story july 2005 floods there is some cloud burst which is happening and mumbai is definitely going to paralyze completely that was a kind of a disaster i covered and it has again told me that it is not just the mumbai it is globally because of the climate change and global warming such kind of incidences are going to happen it is the community it is me you and those who are sitting in a policy making level we will have to have a cohesive approach to basically tackle this incident so i think lot of stories can be told just to give you the perspective there are two three takeaways which i'd like to say as for the students as i told i'm not a matured enough to give an advice but certainly i can give you some suggestions a 
You know what I strongly feel? You have to be a prisoner of hope. By prisoner of hope, I mean there are basically odds which are definitely coming to you. Try to convert these odds into an opportunity and you will have it. I am enjoying that. As Vincent Churchill has said, you know, basically the success is never final and failure is never what we call fatal. Follow that. You will definitely get success. The sky is limit for you. Nobody will stop you. But my this thing, suggestion is that don't emulate. Don't go for a blind following. Don't be a bandwagon. Have a courage to chart your own path and be successful and a winner. And the last, you know, it's very interesting. As we say, good journalism and good journalists do not shrink from a challenge. Similar, a career or profession that you choose, if you give in 100%, you are not going to fail, neither going to, repo, uh, neither going to uh, repent. So just to conclude, I will conclude with you know, Abraham Lincoln's very famous quote. The best way to predict your future is to create it.